I can give you examples from other industry sectors because we can learn so much from other industries. Let's look at the world of bookshops. My first business actually, when I was a young man, aged 22, was a bookshop. I owned and managed the bookshop. But that was in the, the good old days before Amazon, when people had to go to bookshops. Nowadays, bookshops are struggling, they're closing, they're going through a crisis. Certainly in my country, the United Kingdom, many, many bookshops have closed because of Amazon. But some bookshops survive. Why? Because they ask a different question. They've reframed the question. Instead of asking, how can we sell more books, which actually Amazon is better at doing, they ask the question, how can we enrich the lives of book buyers, of book lovers? Of course, we can sell them books, but we can do more than that. We can talk to them. We can make recommendations. We can say, I noticed that you're buying a lot of poetry nowadays. Have you tried this poet? I know that Amazon can do that through its algorithms, but it's sometimes different for a person to say that. And these bookshops can organize events where people get together. They can invite the author to sign your book and talk about the book. And you come away with a signed book, having met the author. And then you've got a story to tell. You go home and say, look at my book. It's signed by the author. I met her, you know. She's a very interesting lady and she was telling me. And we've got a story with which to show off. So they think differently by not asking the question, how can we sell books? But how can we enrich the lives of book lovers? There are parallels here, aren't there, for the travel industry? How would you reframe the question? A company that didn't do it was Kodak. Can you remember Kodak? Are any of you old enough to remember when you had to put a film into a camera? 36 shots for one holiday. Be very careful to using those. Kodak were in the business of making and selling film, and they were the market leaders for so long. But the world changed. Technology happened. And they kept making film. But maybe it was the wrong question. Instead of asking, how can we make and sell film? Maybe the wider question that should have been, how can we, in this modern age, help people to take cool photographs? If they look at that, it in that way, then they might have said, well, what about these new digital cameras that are happening? Maybe we should do digital cameras. But they didn't. They stayed focused on the narrow definition of their business and other people took the market away from them. So we can reframe the question. We can learn from other industries, from their successes and from their failures. Because we don't want to go the way of Kodak or of typewriters or fax machines. We have to reinvent our industry by fully understanding what customers want and asking the right questions so that we can think of innovative ideas. We can also learn from other industries in different ways. And there's a photo of a hotel there in Abu Dhabi because some years ago I was invited to be a member of a consultancy team to help a hotel to come up with a strategy to survive and thrive in a very competitive city full of hotels. And the way we did that was to use a technique that was developed in the banking industry called charting the competition. A technique for looking at your competitors, looking at their characteristics and comparing yourself to them so that you can identify your competitive advantage. So that you can identify your unfair advantage the card that you can play to beat your competitors. And we borrowed that from the banking industry to apply in the hotel sector and came up with a winning strategy for our hotel. And they invited me onto the, um, the team because I didn't know anything about hotels. 
when they invited me, I said, well, I, I'm not a hotel consultant. That's not my speciality. And they said, exactly. And it was actually the client of the consultancy team who insisted they had on their team somebody from outside the industry who would come along with new ideas and ask different questions instead of the same old thinking that, that would happen with hotel consultants. So I was the maverick, I was the outsider, and it was great fun, and I was able to add value. And in the same way, I congratulate you for inviting me here to this, um, this congress for the travel industry, inviting me from the creative industries, from the orange economy, to share some ideas with you. That is also innovative thinking, so congratulate yourselves. I also did some training on leadership with Hilton Hotels, with their senior managers and with their fast track managers. Leadership training, and I used within that leadership training things I'd learned from my own businesses, working in the book trade and in book distribution and international book marketing, and from my clients in the voluntary sector and the creative industries good ideas about leadership that we could adopt into the hotel industry. And then what I learned in the hotel industry, I was able to use on my workshops for businesses in the creative sector. So we can learn from other sectors, good ideas they're using. We often have to adjust them, change them a little bit to adapt them to our business. And in one of my books for the creative sector, for creative entrepreneurs to help them to be smarter in business, I used something I learned at business school called the GE Matrix from the General Electric Company, who had a methodology for deciding which projects to do and which ones not to do, of prioritizing their opportunities. And I adapted that and came up with an idea of the feasibility filter, which is published in my book, with due credit and reference to the inspiration I got from the GE Matrix. So we can learn from other industries in all kinds of ways, and I urge you to do that.